Here's a nice exercise that I usually do with my class when we first start the topic of calculus. It says, use first principles to prove that f of x, which is equal to the absolute value of x, is not differentiable at x equal to zero. Now this kind of question is not really something you'd find in an exam, but I use it as a little exercise to assess how well my students understand what I've taught them regarding limits and a function's differentiability. So, let's recall what it means for a function to be differentiable at a point. So we say, if the limit as h approaches zero of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h exists, then the function f is differentiable at x equal to a, and the derivative is equal to that limit. So for us, we're trying to show that a function is not differentiable at x equal to zero. Okay, we're trying to show that f of x, which is the absolute value of x, is not differentiable at x equal to zero. So what I'm trying to do, if I had to write it down, I'm trying to show, or I could say I'm RTP required to prove, that this limit, the limit as h approaches zero, I'm trying to differentiate or show the lack of differentiability at x equal to zero. So f of zero plus h minus f of zero, all over h, I'm trying to show that this does not exist. And if I can do that, well then that means the function won't be differentiable at x equal to zero. Okay, so basically I will start off by saying we consider the limit as h approaches zero of our function, which is the absolute value of x. So that's going to be the absolute value of zero plus h minus the absolute value of zero all over h. Now what I want to do, as I said, is show that this limit does not exist. But what does it mean for a limit to exist? Well, a limit exists if the left hand and the right hand limits exist and are equal to each other. So I'll have to consider what happens when h approaches zero from below and when h approaches zero from above. And we have to show, if it's not differentiable, we're trying to show that that limit doesn't exist, which means those two one-sided limits are not equal to each other. So first I look at what happens when h approaches zero from below. I'll just write it out again like this, all over h. And now I start to simplify. Well, this will be the limit as h approaches zero from below. That's just the absolute value of h minus zero, which is the absolute value of h all over h. But now I can't sub zero in because then I have zero over zero. That's an indeterminate form. So what I need to do is I need to find a way to cancel off that h in the denominator. And the way to do that is to strip off these absolute values. But I have to be careful because here h is approaching zero from below. So actually h is taking negative values. And if you recall the definition of the absolute value, which is that the absolute value of x is a piecewise function. It's equal to x when x is greater than or equal to zero, but it's equal to minus x when x is less than zero. What I have here is this, is this bottom scenario. It's this branch of the absolute value because I'm subbing in negative values for h. So this actually becomes minus h. So this is the limit as h approaches zero from below of minus h on h. Now I'm able to do some manipulation. These h's cancel. I'm left with the limit as h approaches zero from below of minus one, but minus one's unaffected by h, so it just remains as minus one. So my left hand limit is equal to negative one. Let's now calculate our right hand limit, and hopefully they're not the same, because we're trying to show that the limit doesn't exist. So we now look at the limit as h approaches zero from above of this expression. This is the difference quotient. Okay, it's gonna simplify in the same way down to the absolute value of h on h. But now, sorry, this should be a plus, not a minus. Now h is taking positive values and it's coming towards zero from the positive side. So this absolute value of h that's going to be on the top branch up here. That's going to be equal to h. So that's equal to the limit 
as h approaches 0 from above of h on h, but that simplifies to 1. And again, 1 is unaffected by h, so this limit is equal to 1. So now I'm going to make a little conclusion. I'm going to say, since the left-hand limit, which is the limit as h approaches 0 from below, of this difference quotient, since that does not equal the limit as h approaches 0 from above of that same difference quotient, then the limit as h approaches 0, the two-sided limit, again of the same difference quotient, this does not exist. And if that limit doesn't exist, well then it can't be differentiable at x equal to 0. And so therefore, f of x, which is the absolute value of x, is not differentiable, I'll abbreviate to diff, at x equal to 0. And that's the end of our problem.